monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Welcome to another episode of Phantoms of Monsters Radio, where we explore the strange and the unexplained. I'm your host, Lon Stricker. Thanks for joining us. Now, first of all, if you enjoy our content, please subscribe, like, and share our presentations. Uh, please feel free to comment as well. Uh, Super Chat donations are, are active during the show, so if you want to show your support, please click the dollar icon underneath the chat. Uh, you can also support the channel by using the uh, Buy Me a Coffee link. Uh, and your consideration is very much needed and appreciated. So tonight's going to be a very special show. Uh, this is actually part of an investigation that we've been involved with. I, I guess we were I, I was first contacted back in February of this year. Uh, I'm going to present Carrie and Greg, who are a mar married couple living in Summit County, Ohio. Uh, they have been dealing with this 12-year saga. Namely, there have been monsters in their yard. Cryptid canines are a part of their everyday life. So uh, we're going to look at the evolution of their ordeal and what they've experienced and what they possibly learned from it. You know, Carrie and her husband... Greg moved to Summit County, Ohio in uh, 2003. Greg is an executive chef, and Carrie is a school nutrition specialist. They have three children and a 10-year-old granddaughter. They are avid outdoor enthusiasts and spend as much time as possible camping, scuba diving, and hiking with their two dogs, Liberty and Ripley. Their experiences with the canines, cryptic canines, began in 2010. Uh, Bernadette McDaniel was also going to be joining us as my co-host tonight. Uh, she's an investigator and researcher, Fans of Monsters 14 Research, and she will be premiering her own show here, uh, which will title A Paranormal Life, and that will be presented here on Fans of Monsters Radio. So, Carrie and Greg, thank you for joining us this evening. be presented here on Fans of Monsters Radio. Hi, Lon. So, Good to be here. Gary and Gray, thank you for joining. So, me. where's that coming from, Vincent? Carrie, do you have Hi, your? Good to be here. Gary Gray, thank you for can you hear that? that yeah, I can hear that. Are you wa are you watching the show on something? No, you don't yeah, have you the have show to, on. You on turn your sound down uh, on on the other uh, on the other feed. Yeah, you're you're you're. Hold on a second. I their mic is off now. Hold, just hang on a second. We'll try to straighten this out. You've got to unmute your guys' mic first. Yeah, unmute Mike. Okay. okay. There you are. You've got to you unmute any... your guys' mic See, first. We're hearing that feedback yeah. of me talking and you talking. Okay. okay. Where's that are. coming from? Me talking and you talking. You're, you don't have it on on any uh, radio or any speaker, no? Huh? Me talking and you Let me talking. See if you're, I can you're, remove you don't have it on on any uh, radio. No. Me talking. You talking. You don't have it on on any uh, radio. Okay. No. Is that good? Talking. Talking. Yeah, here, I, no, it's, it's still there. This is what I'm going to have you guys do. I'm going to have you guys back out of the studio link that we sent you to come in on at first and re-enter the studio. This is what I'm going to have you. I'm going to have you re-enter the studio. So just leave, like leave the studio completely and come back in. 
Ah, well, this is part of radio that, that we always yeah. experience occasionally. So <laughs> hang on, folks. Oh, we'll get this done. But while they, while they work on that, <laughs> that okay oh. is that good i think it is okay there you go all right Ta -da! Oh, okay. magic. Yeah, it's show business folks no, no. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that great that's no, okay. that's no problem. thank you so these much these things happen um yeah i mean i know this is the first time you've done this so i i understand it completely so um let's start from the beginning uh when did you first have an encounter or when did you first find out something was going on so we we like you said we moved into the house at in 2003 it was pretty quiet um normal neighborhood um rural community and it was around 2010 um that we first started noticing com some really strange things um the first thing I remember is my son who was living us with us at the time. He was um, going to college. He mentioned that he was hearing something in the tree line around us. And he kept, he, he slept upstairs. And a lot of times since he was going to college, he would be up, you know, pretty late um, until the early morning, sometimes mm -hmm. studying. And he kept saying that he felt like something was watching him. Um, he felt like something was on the roof at night, um, although he couldn't see anything. He could hear something on the roof. So he started making those comments. And around the same time, I started noticing, um, you know, we live in a rural community, so we're going to have dogs and cats missing every once in a while. And people put up posters on, you know, pretty much everywhere, um, telephone poles and everything. But that summer and into that fall, there were dozens of them. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, you could not see a telephone pole that wasn't plastered with lost cats and lost dogs. Really? Right. Yeah. And, and that kind of got me at my attention, but I was um, pulling down the, just, just down the road from where we live. And I was, I noticed there was a telephone pole and it had a big poster and it was a picture of a bulldog, an English bulldog. And that kind of got me because my dad raised Eng English bulldogs when we were growing up and English bulldogs do not have the stamina to actually, and they generally don't run away. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I started thinking, well, maybe there's a predator in the area, you know, maybe we've got coyotes. Um, so we have animals of our own. So I decided that I was going to, you know, just kind of keep an eye on them and see, you know, what was going on. So you didn't really notice anything at that time, did you? No, but we had had we had had a fox resident fox take out our chicken coop. Um, so we had the usual critters. We had chickens. They they well, what do the skunks kind of just kind of eat their heads? That yeah. kind of grody stuff. But so yeah, just your natural raccoons. I mean, we we'd have to trap them and release and. But mm -hmm. nothing that, that we would think was, you know, out of the ordinary. Right. So then one morning that really sticks out to, to the first encounter that I had was, um, and I didn't say anything at the time because I really wasn't sure what it was. I was getting ready for work and it was about 5, 15 in the morning. It was still dark out. And I heard this just weird sound. And at first I was, it sounded like a goose sounded like a goose was like making all kinds of noise. We don't raise geese. So I was like, what is that? So I went to the kitchen and opened the window and all of a sudden the sound changed and it sounded like a dog. It was kind of like a hurt. It was definitely the sound of a hurt animal. So my mind, believe it or not, went right to that bulldog that I had seen just a couple of days earlier. And I thought, well, maybe it's that bulldog. Maybe I can help these people find their dog. So um, our dogs, we had two dogs at the time, um, fairly large dogs. They were already outside. So I went outside 
and I started going up towards the back of our property where we have a nice tree line and we have a lot of the um, bamboo, the wild bamboo that grows up there. Um, I, I did have a flashlight on me. And as I was going up the tree line, I kind of looked back to see where the dogs were and they weren't following me. And I guess mm. that should have been my first, <laughs> my, my first warning. But I, I got up to where the tree line was and I was like a dummy. I'm like, here, puppy, puppy, here, puppy, puppy. And I was just about getting ready to walk into the tree line when all of a sudden this, this growl. And, and I, when I say growl, it's like what I've never heard a growl like that since then. But this thing, whatever it was, it was very large. Um, it lunged out of the brush and I, I could hear it coming towards me. And I didn't even, I stopped for a second in just almost like panic. And as it's coming towards me, all of a sudden I realized that, well, I've got a flashlight. And then I was like, nope, I got to get out of here. So I literally turned around and ran like the 20 yards or so um, to the, to our front door. And the dogs were looking at something behind me as I was running. And I, I made it to the, to the house I don't know how I made it to the house because I'm pretty sure whatever that thing was, it was large enough. It could have run me down because um, mm -hmm. I'm not very fast. And I literally sat down on the floor underneath um, where our kitchen is um, because I couldn't move. I was so scared of whatever that was. The feeling that I had was that it was something that was not natural. It wasn't like a coyote. It wasn't like a wolf. It wasn't like a dog. It wasn't a bear. Um, it was something that basically my mind couldn't wrap itself around. And mm -hmm. I sat there for about two hours. I would not leave until it was all, all light outside. I did, I did stand up and I was kind of looking around just to kind of see if there was anything out there. Uh, but nothing came crashing through the window or the door or anything. And I didn't hear anything else until like almost a week and a half later when my son had our encounter. So tell us a bit about that. What, how did that occur? Um, well, my son came home from school and well, there, there's kind of two encounters here together. So uh, a couple of days prior to the, the encounter, the big encounter we had, um, he came home from school and I heard him walking up the driveway. I'm a mom. I stay up and, um, I want to make sure that my kids make it home, you know, from school, even if they are in their twenties. So, mm -hmm. um, I heard him walking up the driveway cause he usually parks on the driveway below. Uh, and then I heard him probably 30 seconds later walking back down the driveway. So I jumped up real quick thinking, Oh no, did we lock the door on him? Can he not get in? Um, so I ran into the kitchen cause I was going to try and catch him. Um, well, I looked out the window, I didn't see him. I ran into the kitchen only to find him standing in the kitchen. So I kind of looked at him where he was petting the dogs. And I was like, that was kind of weird because I literally just heard him 10 seconds earlier walking down the driveway. How can he be in two places at once? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, of course we hadn't talked about anything. We hadn't had any mutual encounters. So I just kind of put it away with the other encounter just as well, that was kind of weird. And I went back to bed. And then a couple of days later, he came into the bedroom. My husband was sleeping um, or Greg was sleeping. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, is he, I'm very sensitive and noises wake me up. So as soon as he opened the door, I was like, hey, what's going on? Because this is about maybe 1230 at night mm -hmm. and or 1230 in the morning. And he said, um, you got to come outside. Something's got the chickens. And I said, what do you mean? Something's got the chickens. And he goes, mom, just come outside and bring a friend, which we all know what that means. <laughs> right. So of course I jump up, throw my robe on, throw my slippers on, grab the 20 gauge and head outside. So as we're walking outside, he starts telling me about how he heard something, get one of the chickens. We had, we had one chicken that was um, the other chickens would beat it up. So we just let it free range and it never had any problems. No predators got it. We called him Lonely Boy because he was by himself, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as we're walking out, he, he starts telling me about how he heard something and, and Lonely Boy was making a lot of noise. He figured there was a predator out. So he went outside with his handgun 
And from the porch, he has a pretty high powered um, flashlight. So he was shining the light in the neighbor's yard where he heard lonely was. And when he did that, he saw that something had grasped lonely around the center. And all of a sudden this thing was a face and it was not a, not a coyote, not a wolf, but something, some kind of dog kind of creature. And it was very large and had um, yellowish reddish eyes and they was glaring at him. And when he saw that, he was like, Oh, I need some help. So that's when he came in and got me. Mm -hmm. So as we went out, um, I could see, we were in the middle of the yard. I couldn't see any creature, didn't hear any creature. Um, and lonely boy was like, he was crashing against, we have a, we have a, like a three foot, um, um, chain link fence between our neighbors and our, our property. And he was crashing. He was, he was just, I mean, he was going to break his neck. He was crashing so frantically against that. So I told Drew, I said, Hey, you know, reach over there and grab him. <laughs> and he looked at me and went, I think that's something out of a horror movie, mom. And I, and I finally realized what I said. So I convinced him to actually lift up the fence. I don't know. I don't know why he did it, but he did it. So, um, he lifted up the fence and that rooster came. He was a white rooster. So we could see him at night. He came barreling out from underneath that fence. He went behind me and literally I could see him sizing me up and he decided, Nope, I wasn't enough. And he went running up underneath the porch and he stayed there for three days. Wow. So then Drew and I were, we were shining our flashlights around and trying to look, and as we're standing there, we were probably about 10, 15 feet from the neighbor's property in, in the fence. We heard this growl and it was not a growl that came from the ground. It wasn't, this growl was from about eight, nine feet in the air. And where the growl came from at that time, this was, you know, 12 years ago, there were no trees there that would have sustained something that large. So whatever it was, was literally standing up and it was about 10, 15 feet in front of us. And, and we had high powered flashlights. We couldn't see it, but we just both looked at each other and said, we need to go in the house. So we went into the house and um, we're, we were talking about it. And then it made that, that howling sound that it had made like a week and a half before when it came after me, almost like it was really mad. Mm -hmm. So the weird thing about that is when I checked, when I finally got to check on Lonely Boy, um, he had no marks on him. He had no puncture marks. All he had was a few feathers missing out of his tail. So, you know, what can grab a chicken out of a yard, jump over a three foot fence, hold it in its mouth and not harm it? That was kind of my question that kept going around in, in my head. And what was the purpose of it? Was the purpose of it, you know, at this point I knew we had something weird going on. Um, but was the purpose of it to draw us out or, you know, cause the purpose of it wasn't, wasn't to eat the chicken. Right. Yeah. Like it it with it. Yeah. 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 It was playing, it was playing with the chicken. So, and that actually happened another time a, a couple weeks later. And then we started lonely boy started coming on the back porch at night. He would actually knock on the door for us to let him in the house. <laughs> he, didn't be out. he didn't want to be outside. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame him. So. Um, so what did that evolve into where I knew you had a bigger encounter later. Um, what happened? Well, do you want to talk a little bit about what was going around around the house? Yeah, there was one um, when it was me and Drew and Carrie. And I think there was some, it was it on the roof or on the walls. We, there was some pounding going on that, that's what I kind of heard. That's what really caught my attention. Um, and we went outside again with, with some friends that we were all carrying. And we we kept hearing, it sounded like, of course, my first thought was it's just a deer running through the woods mm -hmm. um, up on our, we have a pretty large, we have two acres. So we have a top yard where there's, there's brush there. You know, kind of on all three sides, there's brush. And then there's an antique kind of mall behind us. But so we heard it in the top yard. Um, and then so we, we started heading that way. And then within a couple seconds, it was directly behind us. And then 
it was to the right of us. So it was almost like there was multiple um, things moving around us. You know, it was, it was um, and, and, and the quickness was, so we, we at that point figured it probably wasn't a deer or raccoon, you know, um, and I think that was, we didn't really get any footprints or anything from that one. No, so. not yet. So um, just, just, we, we started having, it, it was almost like this thing realized that we could at least hear it. And we were aware of it because we came out with guns, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I think it started toying with us or they started toying with us. Um, later <coughs> on, we pretty much decided that we, we had a pack that would come here. Um, but it, it was toying with us. It would knock on the windows. It, it, it and to this day, um, it knocks on the door. It likes to look at us because I can always, I'm very sensitive of those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, I know when it's here, I can feel when it's here. Cause there's a distinct feel. Um, sometimes we smell it. It marks, it marks our house with the most ungodly urine smell you'd ever want to smell. Um, our dogs are scared to go out. You know, we always know first off when it's there because the dogs won't go outside at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it comes all times of the day, mostly at dusk, but mm -hmm. it can come at four o'clock in the morning. It can come during the day. My daughter has had instances where she's been here. She won't be here alone um, unless we're here. Uh, because she was here and it was pounding. I mean, literally pounding on the side of the house. If you can imagine sitting here, you know, watching TV or something, and then all of a sudden hearing pounding um, and then going outside and not seeing anything it, that, that, you know, it's almost like it was, it was just playing with us. We were like toys to it. You also mentioned that it was leaving stones and sticks there as well for you. Yeah. Um, by the bedroom window, by um, my bedroom window or our bedroom window, um, I would find just random stones that were stacked on top of each other, um, you know, sometimes a large stone, probably about, you know, like this, this big, um, just laid against the side of the house, um, sticks laid against the side of the house, um, just, you know, you know, perpendicular to the house and, and things like that. Almost, almost like, you know, right next to the bedroom window. That was, that was the first time that I started noticing that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you want to tell them what we did when all this stuff started happening? It's perfect. Well, I'm 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 a non-believer, so I'm I'm gonna kind of write it off to the logical side of things. So um Carrie's like, oh no, no, it's this and I said, Well, no, it's probably animals. So we decided to get a trail cam and I think we bought two. Yeah. And so we got some pretty good footage from that. Um and I, I still, even after we got the shots, um Kind of still wrote it off as a raccoon, but we actually had a. Oh, you're picture. talking about the picture of the eyes of when you went yeah, outside. Yeah, because yeah. we, we used one of our our older sheds as a um, chicken coop. Um, so we kind of you can see we built a fence on the out so they could go in and out. Um, and I had gone out just to shut them up, feed them, make sure everything was cool. And Carrie showed me. Um, why well, would we check the footage maybe the next day? Mm -hmm. um and she's like she's freaking out and i'm like oh you know that's a raccoon but um you can clearly see that it's not a raccoon mm -hmm. um but i i still kind of really wasn't a believer but actually actually after i kind of caught a raccoon's eyes up in the trees and, and saw the distance from the from the two eyes that that you can look at that picture and know that that head is way bigger mm -hmm. <laughs> than a raccoon's eyes so that's kind of when i kind of said i think we got something going on here in the in the yard so so when when i first saw this picture i almost deleted the first one because i was like well there's nothing there um but i went on to the second one and then i literally sat there for an hour toggling back and forth between the two pictures because you can literally see now this where where the point is on the roof if you want to um um zoom in yeah, zoom in there where the point is on the roof i measured it that's six and a half feet okay there is nothing on the other side of that that anything can be standing on the tree that's in that picture is about four feet behind the building so there's nothing hanging in the tree um i even sent these pictures to odnr 
to have them evaluate it. And you know, of course they said, well, it's two raccoons. Well, I said, well, if there's two raccoons, there should be four eyes unless they're looking away. But the thing that kind of gets me is how this thing hunkered down. It, it, it has the intelligence um, to hunker down and kind of go with the, the, um, the side of the roof. And then as soon as he turns away and, and isn't looking pretty much directly at it, it pokes its head up and it watches him walk away. Mm. And that really made my skin crawl when I saw that. And then I, I asked him, I said, did you hear anything? The only thing I, I heard was almost a, like a clicking um, or like a, I want to say maybe I kind of thought it would be like a small animal, but you know, most animals, you squirrels and stuff really don't make that kind of noise, but that's the only thing I, I, I can really say I remember hearing, but it was really, when this thing seems to be around it, it's very quiet because we, we have a lot of animals, but when, when Carrie knows that it's in the vicinity, you won't hear burr. You won't, you know what I mean? It, it's like kind of creepy silence. So it, it appears that everything ar around us that's, that's, you know, the natural habitat seems to know when this, this guy's in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so um, you, you later got another photograph as well. You said was the back of this creature. Yes. Do you guys have that one? I don't know. I do. Um, I guess Vincent may have it. Okay. So we we got a like as anybody who puts out trail cams, you get a bunch of missed flashes and stuff like that. Um, no, is there another one? Yeah, this one. I don't know what that was. At first, I thought it was me, but I literally had these trail cams six feet off the ground. So and I didn't turn them on until I placed them. So that is not me. So I'm not really sure what that is. Mm -hmm. But there's another picture where we got the back of something and you can tell it wasn't a misfire because you can see the trees off to the right. And it was literally probably something that was over seven feet tall and you catch, there you go. So, so up in the right hand corner, um, you can actually see the leaves in the trees. So you, so that is something that I assume ran by the camera very, very quickly. Well, you can see the hair on it. Exactly. Yeah, that that is a hairy back. And, you know, I don't know what we have around here that's over seven feet tall that has hair like that coming off of its back. So when we started seeing these pictures, I was like, OK, we, we've got something here that we can't explain. Right. right. So um, and then the. Um, the we started in it into the winter, we started having some footprints, some mysterious footprints around the house. Mm -hmm. And um, Greg was, I think you were gone at this time. Um, he had some, so if you can see here, I was home by myself. He was, he was doing some, some traveling. Um, but we had these footprints that I saw when I came home from work and I'd gotten the dogs out and I put them away immediately. Cause I, I thought that these footprints were so strange. I went and I got, and I don't know if you have the one, um, I got the, um, the, the, when they plow the driveways, they put those orange, um, what, what you might call it? Like posts we in had the markers, yeah, the, the, the yeah. Markers. Plum, plum markers. and they were very light. So I went and grabbed one of those because it was a very light snow and I wanted something. And these footprints, these are three feet long, um, poles and these feet footprints, the space between them is longer than these poles. Okay. Okay. And now we, you know, we live rurally, so we have rabbits. And, and you know, some people are like, well, that's a rabbit. I don't know of a rabbit that can jump four or five feet. No. Right? Not only that, but you can usually see. It's a distinct well, pattern, too. I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it's like the, um, you can see the back legs in the snow, the body, then the back legs of this in the snow. It's right. got a distinctive pattern to it. I mean, this looked like a very tall man walked through our yard. And right. you can see in this one, you can see that the dogs had run through a couple of them. And I got them in the house right away before they ruined them. Now, I even went inside and got myself a hair blower to try and get some of that light snow out of there to see if I can actually see the prints. But unfortunately, they were it was about they're they're probably about 12 inches deep there. So I wasn't mm -hmm. able to get that at that time. But what was really weird about that was... 
they seem to either start or end right at our bay window. And that's where this creature, I think, likes, or these creatures like to look in our house. Um, well, th this picture that you're seeing are my footprints. I walked alongside of it. So I took three steps to its one. Right. Uh, three normal human steps. Right. Um, anyway, so they ended or started right at our bay window and um, went to the back of our property. So either this thing was on our roof and jumped down or it came from the back of the property and went up to the roof. All right, that's another story. So hold those pictures. Don't put those up yet. <laughs> that's for all, for another story. Um, so, you know, when I, when I saw that, I immediately went out and took pictures. Now, I don't know anything about taking pictures or doing anything like that. So I, I was just an amateur doing it. So, you know, I didn't get any casts yet, um, but hopefully we'll get some, you know, when, whenever we see our next footprints. Um, so then the one that really, really solidified the fact that we had a dog man here, because, you know, in the back of your mind, like Greg said, you're trying to rationalize it. You're trying to look for a natural explanation. Um, Greg was, um, he was, he was out of the house and I was home alone and my son was, um, then going to Hocking Hills. And he really struggled with going to Hocking Hills because, you know, he knew that these things were around and he didn't want to leave me. And he knew I was home alone a lot. So he didn't want to leave me. But I said, you know, what are you going to do? You're, you're at college most of the time anyway. So you've got to go. Mm -hmm. So um, so one night I was sitting here doing work. It was about I don't know, about, I don't know, about 10, 1030. And I heard the usual walking on the back deck. I heard the thumping on the side of the house. So I gave him a call. And I let him know. And I, I walked over to the kitchen sink. Now we have a window that looks out into our yard and we can see our neighbors, like Greg had said previously, the antique barn. Mm -hmm. And this night was so bright. It, we had a full moon and we had just gotten a, a, a nice snow. So I could see perfectly outside. It was almost like it was daylight. And I'm talking to my son on, on, the, on the phone and all of a sudden I see this figure run from one side of the neighbor's driveway by the antique barn all the way down to the other side, probably about a hundred yards. And it was about a split second. Um, and as I'm sitting there, it starts going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's crouching down. It, I mean, this was a bipedal creature. Um, I could, I can make out the arms. I can make out the head. It was kind of crunched down almost like, and it was lunging at something that was on the ground Mm. Um, and I, I literally sat there for 20 minutes watching this. Now, here you go. I'm my mind. It's, it's like you go through these phases because literally I'm talking to my son and I'm going, what the heck is that? What the heck is that? What is that? And I had totally forgotten that I was actually talking to him on the phone, you know, and I've had friends of mine that I've, I've told them about this encounter and they've said, why didn't you record it? And I'm like, you don't think when you see these things, you just, your mind is just trying to figure out what the heck you're seeing, right? So as I'm watching this thing go back and forth, I'm sitting there going, what the heck is that? What the heck is that? And my son all of a sudden shouts, mom, what is going on? <laughs> and I went, oh, Drew, I'm really sorry. I said, uh, um, and I told him what I was seeing and he's like, don't go outside. And I think my response was something like, well, that's kind of crazy because it's kind of cold out there. So I'm like, <laughs> So, um, but the next day I decided, you know, I was praying all that night that it wouldn't snow again because I knew there had to be footprints out there. I knew there had to be footprints. I wanted proof of this once and for all. So the next day, um, I had off work and I walked out there and there were tons of footprints, but the problem was, um, it had run inside of its own footprints. There were slide marks where it had slid. So it, it took me almost... 25 to 30 minutes before I could actually find a valuable footprint that I could take a picture of. Mm -hmm. So if you want to show those pictures of those footprints. So I, the only thing I could gauge it with was my hand. So mm -hmm. these, these are actually two different kinds of footprints. Um, I believe one of the footprints is a front um, hand and I believe the other one is a back paw. 
And the one thing that I, I, I thought was weird about this is it, it seems to be that they run the ones that we have here um, run on their tippy toes. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if they looked like they were on their pads. Yes. Running. No, it, I mean, in any of these pictures, I could not find a pad. Right. Um, the one where I've got my hand next to you, that's almost, you can actually, if you zoom into that, you can see the nails. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the claw marks. <sighs> Um, it was, I think that was one, it was reaching for something. Now there was some blood out there. I think it was after some rabbits, that one there, that is that the one on the right, that's the back foot. Right. I, I believe, cause you don't see the, the paw print or the, the back pads at all. So it, it has a different kind of foot rather than like a, a regular dog's foot. Right. And the one to the left, you can actually see where the slide, where it slid, mm -hmm. you know, I think there was a footprint there and it slid and then it reached for something and grabbed down. So you got that, that nice little hand claw print there. Um, so after I got these prints, you can see that these prints are, almost, they're pretty much as big as my hand. Um, we have a, a seven, we had a 75 pound black lab Wilson I went over and found some of his footprints so you could see kind of the difference mm -hmm. in the sizes of these footprints and even just how the di how it looks so differently. Do you have that picture, Vincent? There, yeah, right there. So on the left is the dog man. Um, I think that's its back, back feet. And you can see by my thumb how it's, it's back feet is kind of like spread out. So um, you almost have like almost a thumb um, expenditure or appendage there. But then in the right, that's our black labs footprint. So these are not dog footprints whatsoever. Right. They're not deer footprints. I don't, you know, from what I saw, it was a bipedal animal that was running on two feet. That was extremely, I mean, these things are extremely fast and, um, yeah, I mean that's that's about all I yeah. can say about that one. <laughs> well, look, um, I, I know later on, I guess it was February of uh, 2011, you had people come over, you had visitors and such, and some other people actually realized that you had something there as well, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, we've had a lot of people that have had encounters, and none of them actually ever come back to our house. Is that right? Yeah, they just they're just like, nope, nope, not happen because they, they just can't wrap their heads around it. You know, a lot of them ask us, you know, why do you live there? <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes we can't answer that question very well either. But um, so we had we had a friend of ours. Do you want to tell him the story about watching Scooter? Oh, yeah, we were dog sitting um, and they came over and we were eating. And she had two kids and I, th I think we were eating, we finished up eating it and it was kind of getting dark and she came in and, and she said that we had a very weird, weird neighbor. And, and we were like, well, no, well, they're okay. We like our neighbors. You know, what do you mean? She goes, well, he's what, breaking, breaking leaves or something. No, that's when he said he was standing. Oh, standing up at the top. Yeah. He was watching the kids play with the dog because she brought her kids over. Mm -hmm. Watching the kids, he was up in the tree line watching the kids. He had a gray fur coat on and he kept swinging his arms back and forth like he was looking yeah. for something in the weeds. So I was wow. like, yeah. Um, so instantly I knew what, what she was talking about. I knew we, we have a nickname for that dog man. His name, we call him Mr. Gray because he is gray. And, and we believe he is the elder of the pack that we have. Some of them are brown. Some of them are black. He's the only one that we see that's gray. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that's him on the top um, of the picture that we got at the chicken coop. Um, he's the tallest one. So I think he's the, you know, the, the male, you know, the alpha male, the player. alpha male. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Alpha. The alpha male. Yeah. Um, but as soon as she said gray, you know, he has a gray fur coat on. We knew that was Mr. Gray. Cause we we've caught glimpses of him before. Um, but only for a second. I mean, literally when you see these things, they, they, whether they can, you know, we've looked up 
other people believe they can cloak themselves or they move through portals. We don't know. We just know that you see them for a split second. Most times they're surprised that you're able to see them as well as they can see you. And then they just, they, they vanish. I mean, they'll vanish right in front of your eyes. So, so she was telling us about, um, you know, Mr. Gray and they had wanted to go next door cause there were triplets born, um, and with the farmer and he, you know, that's very rare. So the kids of course wanted to go see the baby cows. So as we were going across, um, our driveway to our neighbor's house, we started hearing something walking in leaves. And Annette said, you know, Hey, there's, that's, there's your weird neighbor again. And that's when I said, well, maybe I should tell you, we, we kind of <laughs> so, okay. hang on here. Um, so I was, I was very quiet when I was telling her, Greg was in front and um, the two kids were kind of in between us. And I, I, I just said to her, I said, um, you know, you know, we have this creature that we think comes and we don't know what it is. I didn't want to scare the kids. I didn't think the kids even heard me. And then her son came back to us and goes, I know what it is. And he put his hands on his hips. And I said, well, what do you think it is? And he goes, it's a wolf man. It's mm -hmm. a werewolf. <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? And then I'm trying to play it off. I'm like, you know, I don't want people to be scared of, you know, of people in, in my yard, you know, or not want to come to my house. And so I, I kind of played it off and said, there's no such thing as werewolves. And then the little girl call, comes up and goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, I saw it too. So I said, well, what do you mean? What kind of werewolves, well, you know, what do you, what do you think it is? How do you know it's a werewolf? And she goes, because I saw its teeth and it has big teeth. And it, you know, mm. and so, yeah, so we made the, you know, made the trip to the barn very quickly, um, <laughs> came back home. And had to help them into their car because they didn't want to go back so back outside once it was really really dark outside. <laughs> so, uh, I, I got a question from Nancy Malcolm. Who, she wanted to know how many of these creatures have you ever seen together at one time? You want to answer that? Seen together. I can't, I can't go ahead. Well, what do you mean together? So both of us or we, we, multiple? No, them yeah. together, the creatures together. together. So the thing is, we've only seen one at a time most times, mm -hmm. right? But we know there are multiple ones out there because, I mean, this is silly to talk about, but um, when it first started, we were very, we were afraid. We didn't know what was out in our yard. So mm. we would go out with guns once the pounding started on our, in our house and we would go out and we would walk around a whole neighbor, you know, I mean, our whole yard. And we would, like Greg had said earlier, we would hear one in front of us. We would hear one to the right of us. We would hear one to the left of us. And we were like, well, either this thing flies or we have more than one. So I, I have heard up to five. Um, really? at one time. Um, in fact, just a few months ago, and we can talk about that incident later. Um, when we got our puppy, um, there were five, I, I felt the presence of five of them at the same time. And then what do you think? Well, we had actually, um, we kind of bumped into a, a few, uh, friends that, um, Kara give you their names, but we're kind of working with them and, up in uh, Hocking Hills, Richard, and he's kind of given us some feedback about them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he kind of let us know that there, there's usually packs of what, five to seven, five to seven. Um, yeah. And then there's an alpha. Um, the, the one that I saw was extremely fast. It was a blink. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the dogs, the dogs hear them before they see them. And I'm not even sure if the dogs can actually see them but boy that they sure know when, when they're around because they won't they won't leave yeah. which is yeah. probably a good thing because then they don't eat them well you're talking <laughs> about a, a 80 pound german shepherd who's fast as lightning he's terrified so yeah it's pretty wild but no we haven't really seen any together we we've just heard um multiple almost like they're flanking us which is is probably the creepiest part you know wow. Yeah. It's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, that movie Jurassic, the first mm -hmm. Jurassic Park, where they talk about the raptors and how the one raptor is, <laughs> is in front and it's making all that noise. And then the other two come from the sides. That's it. When, when I first noticed that they were kind of doing that, that's what I thought of. 
right. was that you know what that this is their hunting technique this is how they drag down prey and you know and then that's when we decided we weren't going outside anymore <laughs> we were just gonna let them bang on the house because it seemed like that's how they were trying to get our attention you know mm -hmm. what i mean so For a day, had, you got anything oh, go ahead. <laughs> um I'm just actually just taking it all in. I think that the fact that, you know, the kids were able to, you know, get that close to see its teeth is amazing. I mean, you know, I just, I, I think that there's a lot going on at your place that it's just, yeah. And well, I tend burn to agree. Dead, burn dead. I, I'm glad you're gentle. You burn a dead's also uh, intuitive. And um, so how did you, I mean, did you ever try to communicate with them? Um, yeah, actually, um, Lon, thank you for having, I'm sorry that Jennifer couldn't be on tonight, yeah. but thank you for, you know, putting us in contact. Cause I still talk to her. I mean, we talk a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. um, she's been fabulous. Um, yeah. Um, she, well, <laughs> Our first communication, I don't know if you remember, because I called you and I was like, what the heck? Um, the very first thing she said to me was, do not try and communicate with the dog men because they want nothing other than to ev eviscerate you. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of stopped me from going forward with trying to communicate with them. But then her and I had some conversations and I said, I, I, I'm going to have to, you know, the one thing about Jennifer is you can, you can, you know, have a difference of opinion and she can, um, you know, she appreciates that. And um, so we agreed to disagree because I said, you know, these creatures could have killed me and my husband a thousand times in the last 10 years. And they have yeah. not, they have not harmed our dogs. They've scared us. Um, and, and quite honestly, they've done some things that make me believe that they have a sense of humor. And I can tell you about that, the October story, if you want later on. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but uh, yeah, so um, so I, I just I just agreed to disagree with her. So yeah. we, we have started recently um, some active communication. And I think that came from mostly when we got our new dog, Ripley. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, um, a, a new Rottweiler puppy and um, probably about a week or a week and a half into having Ripley, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I, I wondered how she would, you know, how they would accept her as part of our pack, so to speak. So um, one night it, it was about maybe, but I think it was about 1230 at night. I, she got me up cause she had to go outside, you know, how puppies are. So we went outside. I had my little headlamp on and everything. And I had her out outside, didn't turn on the headlamp. And I just heard three of them immediately as soon as we walked out the door. And I heard one directly in front of me and two to the right of me. And they were all in the tree lines. And they were making such a racket. I mean, I had not heard them make this kind of a ruckus in a long time. They were stomping. They were snorting, they were, and then they started making this weird noise, this weird, weird growling noise. And I'm literally standing right next to Ripley while she's doing her business, you know, kind of praying that she would hurry up because I didn't know if they wanted to eat her or what was going on. So um, I got her back in the house as soon as I can. I ran, I ran back out with my video, uh, well, with my phone to take some audio and some video and um, unfortunately, with where we're at, with the traffic going by, even at that night, because we're in between two high rays, you couldn't make anything out. Mm -hmm. But the growling sound that they all three started making was, I knew I had heard it before. I couldn't figure out what it was. I'm like, are they, because they mimic things. I don't know if we said this already. They tend to mimic other animals, sometimes owls, sometimes coyotes, but you can always tell by the tone that it's not the, the animal that they're mimicking. Um, and I do believe that they use that to draw in other animals as prey, especially dogs, right? Um, and you and I, Lon and Bernadette, we talked about this earlier. I think that's why they, they gravitate and they are not like Bigfoot, but they come around humans because they know that they've got some ample prey with us because we have dogs and we have cats. Right. And so they have a little snack, you know, by coming around mm -hmm. us. 
Um, but anyway, so um, I, I, I ended up going back to bed and I literally sat up at 4 a.m. and my brain wouldn't shut it off. And kind of when I was half asleep, it finally came to me. And what it was, was they were mimicking Ripley's play sounds when she played with us, you know, as a puppy, they make growling sounds when they're tugging on things. And it was almost identical to the sounds that she makes. And I was just like, I, I, I literally got up at six o'clock and called, I think I called Jennifer. She couldn't call me back until later. And I said, what is going on? Why are they making, why are they mimicking our puppy? And Jennifer says she reached out to him um, because she, you know, you guys know she's a medium and um, she says, well, they're very angry with you right now, Carrie. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, you haven't introduced her as part of your pack. And I went, what? Is that a thing? Should I do that? So I, she talked me through how to do it. I did that immediately that same day. I literally walked Ripley up and, you know, through my mind, you know, said to them, you know, I want you guys to meet Ripley. She's a new member of our pack. You are not to hurt her. You are not to harm her. Um, you know, so basically I, I just wanted to let you know, and I did that. I walked around the whole perimeter of our yard so that they knew that she was out of bounds for them. And um, I asked them for a sign, if they would give me a sign that they had, had heard me and understood and understood what I was saying. So the next morning I went up and I looked for the sign that I knew that they would leave me. Cause anytime I ask them to leave me a sign, they generally do. And it's generally rocks. They, they like to talk with rocks and um, up, by where we, we always see Mr. Gray up in the area where we have the most activity, there was a large rock in the middle of the yard. Um, I did take pictures of it, but I forgot to send it to you guys. Um, and I know that that rock was not there the day before because my husband had just mowed the grass. Mm -hmm. And if, if he had mowed the grass, a, 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 you know, a rock that large would have actually ruined our mower. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been communicating with them. I've been trying to communicate with them. And, uh, you know, the first thing we did, you know, that Jennifer helped me with was setting the boundaries, letting them know that this is our house and you don't hurt anybody in this house and, you, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, one of the weird things that really happened to me with the communication thing, because I'm new to this, you know, Jen's trying to teach me things. I am very sensitive. I do have some kind of, you know, she says some kind of medium um, capabilities, but not a lot that I've worked with at all, just the sensitivity to things. And um, I, I will do the things that she tells me to do and, and speak to them telepathically if I can. And I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, it's the only thing I've got to, you know, they don't stand in front of me. I can't talk to them. All right. So during this one, like two week period, I was like, okay, I need to know, are you friend or foe? You know, are you here to eat me or you don't want to learn from me or, you know, what's going on? So one day I was like half asleep. I was just drifting off. And this, this was very impactful for me because in my mind, I heard, I am friend. And since then, I have not been afraid of them. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So, I well, am. go ahead, Greg. <laughs> that I am. <laughs> oh, I know you are. <laughs> I would be too. Yeah, yeah I'm not getting nope. any I am friends in my dreams. So. <laughs> That's because he sleeps like a rock. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. I know recently there's been a development. Uh, you think since uh, they're considering you a friend, they allowed you to see their puppies? Yes. Yes. Because all of this has come in the, probably in the last kind of three or four months. Right. Um, they do have pups. I'm 100%. Well, Jennifer and I have worked with that. Um, she's reached out to them. I didn't get an answer when I did. Um, they do not like them being called pups um, because they don't like it being annotated for our, our, our dogs. Um, mm -hmm. They don't like dogs very much. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so Greg and I, I, I have, I had been hearing a couple times off in the woods, 
probably I would guess about a half a mile away, yips and yelps and all these weird things. And, and, um, I actually, we actually got a, um, parabolic and, um, a night vision binoculars so that we could see things outside. Mm -hmm. Um, so before the parabolic came, I was hearing these things and I said, that's not coyotes. That's not, that's not neighborhood dogs. There were, it sounded like there was a lot, a lot of them and they were young. Um, you know, I said, those sounds like, like offspring, young puppies. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, the next time I heard it, I actually brought Greg outside. You want to talk about that? What you, yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was definitely, uh, more than one canine type howling going on, but it was, it was pretty high pitched. Um, I, I'm sure other people around us had to hear it too. So, um, it didn't last too long. I'd say mm, three to four minutes. So, but it, it was pretty loud and it was, it was pretty close. I'd say, what, what do you think? Half mile, half a mile, quarter mile at um, the most. We've got a good 20 acre patch almost like caddy corner to our backyard that's that's got a lot of fields and we're pretty sure that that's where a lot of activity and, and a lot of stuff goes on so but we definitely that was more than one night that was three nights three nights that we heard it and i and i, I right away i said that they have they have offspring that's a lair they're out there whether mom or dad is you know the alpha males bringing home some meat and they're really happy and they're eating you know something's going on out there because it did not sound like natural noises that we hear around here all the time yes have your have your neighbors ever commented about this well okay so this is the first time we've ever really come out other than you know yeah, i know yeah yeah so I don't know how people would take this. I, I'm I am pretty much I am really sure that our neighbors have had some experiences because they all have big bright lights on and our one neighbor up above from us um, up on the hill. They don't let their dog out unless it's on a leash and they walk it around to go to the bathroom. So in in the country, that's kind of unheard of. Um, so I'm pretty sure that other people have had it. I just have not had the courage to go up and say, hey. Have you had a dogman in your backyard? <laughs> you know? Well, how do you bring it up? That's that's how, you know, for any experience, yeah. or how do you bring it up? You don't you talk that? about it. That's right. the thing, you know. Because because one of their main, you know, you know, great company who have had the experiences. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and it it hasn't been until recently until I reached out to Lon um, till we found, you know, we, we're also working with another group. Um um, that, you know, Greg mentioned Rick, Richard McClandish, um, he's in Hocking Hills in a campground mm -hmm. that we are, and he's, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's mm -hmm. been a Bigfoot hunter for, you know, well, researcher, he's not a hunter, um, for 50 years and just sitting down with Richard for like 20 minutes, I was like, well, our encounters aren't nothing compared to what he's been through. <laughs> you know, he's just got a plethora of information and, and I just love being around him. Mm -hmm. um, but, but he put together a team and they're doing a, uh, a documentary. David Wolf is the, um, the movie producer and um, his website is exposing the strange. And mm -hmm. we've been on a couple, we've been on at least one, you know, hike with them. And, and we found some really cool Bigfoot stuff with them, which was really neat. My daughter found some Bigfoot footprints going up a, a, a cliff basically. Um, and then we have Todd Poling as a part of our group, who is a wildlife photographer, and he's the one who actually cleaned up our pictures of the um, dogmen on our roof, so that we could actually see that yes, that is a dog face on there, and it's not just leaves. He did an awesome job for that. So you know, working with you and Jennifer, and and you know, hopefully someday, you know, Bernadette, um, you know, they're going to come out. They all want to come out and they want to do an investigation. So we've, we've been doing a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, by meeting all of you guys, you guys have actually gotten given us the strength to come out and tell our story versus just hiding it. Cause we've hit it for 12 years. Yeah. We don't want people to think we're crazy, but <laughs> how, how do you explain something like this? It doesn't. Well, I, sense. I hear that all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, people are, are don't want to be ridiculed. They don't want to be questioned. And I get that. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions here. Um, first of all, I, I know you initially contacted Linda Godfrey back in right. 
when this started. And I know part of this story was some of it was put in a book about your son's encounter, I think, mostly. Um, and I, I did go back and look, but I did find it. But you didn't hear anything else from her since then, did you? No, she was supposed to be coming out with a crew. Um, unfortunately, her health took a bit of a turn. Yeah, I know. And she was never able to come out, which was, you know, and then after that, I just, I mean, who do you talk to about this? Right. right. You know? I, yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you, you got a hold of me. I mean, you know, that was absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you did. I, I do have a couple other questions, though, and people are throwing questions yeah. at me. Uh, but there is one here that's very interesting from Mothman46. Do you live near any cemeteries or mounds? You know, that's funny because Richard asked us the same thing. Did he? And I did get the history behind that. Um, we have some really older parts of the city that we live in mm -hmm. that there are some older cemeteries. I don't know about mounds. Um, so I've been doing, since he said that, he said that the dogmen were looking for something and he was telling us about that. Um, and that they're looking in cemeteries, they're looking in ancient Indian mounds because something was buried of theirs. And, um, so I started researching the area and what I did find in our area was that, um, we have miles and miles of closed limestone mines mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out who owns them so we can go in there and check on, you know, because a lot of people are like, you you know, where would the dogmen leave around you or live around you? There's there's nowhere for them to live. I really think that they may be dwelling down in those mines at, at times or, or during parts of the year. Um, but no, we I, I mean, we have small cemeteries and I'm not really sure. I'd have to research that. Right. No, I, you know, we, we have a lot of canines upper upright canine and, and cryptic canine studies here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And uh, we we have thought, Butch thought, and I thought from the very beginning that they may hide in coal mines here. Mm. Um, so, you know, that may very well be. I mean, if, they, if you do have open mines where there's cave a cave system in there somehow, absolutely. I think there's, it's very possible they could do that. Mm -hmm. um, James asked, James West asked, have you ever tested the strength of your doors and other entry points physically? James is, I, I'll tell you, if James is, a, is an experiencer, he's had two dogman encounters, physical encounters, and they tried to get in to his house. Oh. Hmm. They, and that he's concerned about that. If, if you ever, uh, if you ever checked your doors to make sure they couldn't get in. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we've, we've got a mud room in the back. Uh -huh. I, I I suppose they could probably smash that window. So basically we have, um, and the mudroom has a sliding glass to the outside, which is double pane. They, they could probably rip that open. So yeah, but they'd have to get through two doors to get to our back door. Right. And we have a really old house. It's 1922 and it's actually set really weird. Our back door used to be the front door so we really don't even have a front door we have a lower part of our yard where we have a door and that's pretty solid i i could yeah he probably could smash that in if you wanted well, to. well we have this you guys can see this yeah we did put in french door. <laughs> we put french doors in if they wanted to come in they can come in we have yeah i think they can come through that <laughs> yeah they have um, windows, so I mean, if they wanted to come in, they they could come in. Yeah, yeah they, they've been on the roof. Something's been on the roof. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I remember you telling me that um, your granddaughter had actually seen one in the window, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I thought that she was oh, she overheard her talking, but she swears she didn't. So. I, I, you know, I don't want to freak her out, and yeah, you know, when she was about eight years old. Yeah, you know, well, when she was about four, we had a bedroom upstairs for her and we had it all done really nice and everything. And and there happens to be basically a window up there that runs the length of the bed. We have a window like that on both sides of our house. Um, the other side was, you know, our, it's our extra room that used to be my yeah, son's it's a, room. It's a bungalow with two uppers that are fairly small. So, yeah. Super huge so, house. but a huge window. Um, and, 
you know, I never put two and two together. She, she would get up in the middle of the night. She would come running down. She, you know, and finally she just refused. She wouldn't even go up there and play. So after a couple of years of that, I was laying in bed with her, um, one time and I, I was actually laying upstairs with her and she always make sure that I, I shut the, the blinds or shut the, the curtains for her. And she wanted, she didn't want to see anything through the curtains. And so I was like, okay, so I, I was laying down with her and I said, well, honey, why don't you want to lay down up here by yourself? You know, it's, this is a nice room. And, you know, I mean, heck, she kicks me all night long. So, you know, I didn't yeah. want to have that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a toddler. So yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and, you know, she was like probably six, six and a half. And she says, um, I don't like, I don't like the werewolf that watches me. And I went, what? And I had been very careful not to speak around her very careful and i said well what do you mean by that honey and she goes just matter of factly you know he thinks i'm sleeping and he sits there on the roof and he watches me but i'm not sleeping i'm looking at him too wow so needless to say when she comes she gets to sleep with grandma because yeah. i don't want her being traumatized and oh i, I don't believe you yeah and that's the thing i i really think that these these creatures they are drawn to children. They are drawn mm -hmm. there. I mean, I've had more encounters than my husband. My son has, you know, had quite a few encounters here. So it's not a male female thing. Um, but I definitely think, you know, they're interested in us. They're like peeping. I call them peeping Toms because, <laughs> you know, I always hear the gravel moving when I'm walking into the kitchen. I know that one of them was just watching me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they do like to like to walk. I mean, like to watch. And she's still very young, so she's not jaded by the world. I mean, I've had experiences since mm -hmm. I was like four. So, I mean, my son is starting to have them. So it's just, it's that when they're that young, they're that open. Yeah, so and I don't even, I don't even know where she got the idea of werewolf or where she got the term because she yeah. doesn't watch. Scary movies. She yeah, won't we've watch never scary really watched movies. Any werewolf movies? So or anything. she don't. Yeah. She must have gotten in somewhere, but for her to say, you know, it watches me while I'm sleeping. Yeah. You know, it, it watches. It does watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I. We did have a question. Um, <laughs> do you see them on two on two feet and bipedal, or also on quadrupeds? Do you see them on four? You want to answer this one? Yeah. Sure. Um. Boy, I don't know what it was. It about a month ago, um, I was going out of the house checking on the chickens, making sure they're up, they're they're getting put up. So I take Liberty out. She's the German Shepherd. So I'm walking kind of out the back door, and we've kind of got a little hill going up at the end of our driveway. And uh, so I'm just walking, and and Liberty comes tearing by me, and runs directly to the stoop to our back door and, and as she's doing that i'm i look up and there's something stand it's twilight there's something standing a little bit off to the right um by where our fire, fire pit is and i can't mm -hmm. i can see it but it's grayish it's got big shoulders probably six to seven feet tall I, it's got a small head but you know it's like but as i looked up and looked at it my first thought was i got to get my ass inside and get the gun because i'm gonna you know what i mean it's gonna eat me again something but then by the time i turned around i could see the silhouette it actually kind of looked like it went down onto all fours and was gone mm -hmm. like this is all within this isn't like slow mo this this happened in about 2.5 seconds mm -hmm. it just kind of went then just you know and she was looking out the window. She saw me stop, you know, and, and she's like, Greg, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know what I just saw. I, I could tell by his posture that he'd seen one. I stopped. Yeah, he's seen some. Yeah. yeah. And, and it took him, I, I, I'm, and this is no exaggeration, six hours to tell me what he saw. Because wow. he, he couldn't, he couldn't, you know, his mind could. I think that was the first time you've really seen him like that right well yeah the other time my encounter i didn't even know was happening it was watching me on top you know from behind a chicken coop and debating whether i was going to eat me or something i don't know <laughs> so 
I've had encounters with both them being bipedal and also on all fours. Um, recently, um, just a few weeks ago, when I started seeing their offspring, their offspring are um, have been on all fours. They have not been staying. In fact, the first time I saw it, I was looking out the window. I had Ripley was outside with Liberty and um, Ripley's only, uh, you know, going on six months old. So I keep an eye on her. I do have them. I was in the army, so I do have them perimeter trained. I worked with dogs in the army. Um, and I saw her run down the driveway towards the road. So I, mm -hmm. I yelled at Greg. I said, Ripley's going towards the road. So I, I ran outside and ran down the driveway. No Ripley. And I'm like, well, that's weird. How could she disappear? And then all of a sudden I heard something running up into the tree line in the front, around the front of the house. And I was like, Ripley never goes up in that tree line. So I, I went over there and I was like, well, I got to find Ripley. So I ran down by the road thinking she's in the road. So I'm coming back up um, towards our back porch and she comes from around the back of the house. Now we have fences up, so there's no way that she would have been, you know, in the two minutes that it took me to walk up the driveway that she could have completely gone around the house. Right. So then it dawned on me, all of a sudden it clicked, you know, the wimp, the, the, the yikes we've been hearing, the yipping and the sounds. And then I see this and I was like, oh, I came in and I was so excited. <laughs> Is that weird? I was like, we've got pups. We've got pups. <laughs> I, I just knew it. And then the, la the last time I saw the, one of the, the offspring, um, it was actually towards the back of our property. And, and these things must grow phenomenally because it, it, in just a couple, probably about three, four weeks, it had gone from the size of Ripley to the size of our German Shepherd. And it was literally, I would have never even known it was there. Um, I had both dogs outside. Um, and then I just, I always have this headlamp on me so I can keep, cause both of our dogs are black, so I can't see them and I want to make sure they don't become prey. So I only turn the headlamp and if I need it, so I couldn't see either one of them. So I turned the headlamp on and straight ahead was one sitting in the weeds. And I, I saw it's total, at first I thought it was Liberty, our German shepherd, um, because it had the same silhouette that she had. It was sitting like a dog would, mm -hmm. um, and it had, you know, the reflection was green. That's the same color that both of our dogs have. So I know it was a canine and I know it was about, you know, about the size of Liberty, who's about 76 pounds. Right. So it, but it was on the other side of the fence. So I ran in and in the split second that it took me to get the infrared binoculars, um, I literally was turning him on as I was running. Cause I wanted to catch this on Cause it's, I, I could do video on that or take pictures. Um, it stood up, um, in a bipedal, um, um, you know, it, it stood up like, like we would stand up and then just ran off into the woods. And literally mm -hmm. as it started running, my, my binoculars came on, <laughs> came online. So I was oh, like, oh. um, but yeah, so they, they seem to be growing very fast. I have a couple questions from the chat. So Marla Snyder wants to know, why do you feel they have not uh, harmed you? That's, that's honestly what we ask ourselves all the time. You know, we no ask, clue. no clue. We have no clue. You know, they, 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 they want us to know that we're, they're here. I know that um, 100%. They are aware that we can see them and that I believe they are aware that I can feel them when they're here. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to figure out whether they want to communicate. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't, you know, their communication. I think the communication is very um, on the lower spectrum as far as, you know, they don't, they won't hold conversations with us. They'll just be like matter of factly whenever they do say like, like when I was asking them, you know, you're going to eat me or you're going to be my friend. And I got, I am friend, you know, and that's it. I mean, they don't want to say, Hey, you want to have tea tomorrow? You know, things like that. So um, I, we don't, we don't know. And, and then the other question we ask is why us? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Why are you showing yourself to us? Why, you know, you don't, 
you eat everybody else's dogs. You haven't eaten our dogs. Well, we go out with our dogs and our dogs are perimeter trained. So I, I, I don't know how to answer that question because I don't know. They, but they have never been, other than scaring the, you know what, out of us. Like the one time in the chicken coop, it got me. Um, it, it doesn't do anything to harm us. Maybe they realize that you have control of your dogs and they're not going to impede on them and uh, they can respect you for that. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, uh, Vincent asked about mm -hmm. gifting them. I know you feed them bread, right? Uh, not on purpose. But you have. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So, we feed our chickens bread. Okay. Right. So... And that, that was the one thing when Jennifer and I started talking was we, we got this one picture and, and I don't know if Vincent has that one queued up or not. It, it's very blurry. It was a very foggy day. Um, but when she was talking to me, I, I, I immediately remembered that scene where I had gone outside. I had given the chickens bread and if you want to blow that up just a little bit, um, and the next day, not 15 minutes after I'd given them the bread, I caught this picture of what I believe is one of the uh, one of the dogmen eating the bread that I put down for Lonely Boy. Mm. Right? There's no you can see the the chicken coop is to the right. There's no chickens that you can see. Um, however, um, Todd, the gentleman that I told you was the wildlife photographer, mm -hmm. he actually cleaned this up for me. And to the right, um, he was able to make out, and I don't know if you can see, if you want to blow it up just a little bit, there is a four-legged creature. There is another creature in this picture. So to the left of the shed... You can see the, the, the waterer, but then to the left of that, you can just make out, go ahead and yeah, keep going up with your, nope, 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 go back down. I was, I meant the arrow so I could, you could point it to the, with the arrow. Okay. Now go to the left right there. Nope. Go to the right just a little bit right there. Okay. If you look in that area, um, I could not believe it. He said, you know, you have another creature there. There is a four-legged creature. I believe that this may have been another offspring. We just didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so Jennifer asked me when, when we were talking, well, she didn't ask me. She just flat out said, you know, because I, I told her, why are they coming around here? What, what, why? Why us? And she said, because you're feeding them. And I was like, that's crazy. I would never feed these things. I don't, I, I don't even know what they are. I don't even know what they eat. So then I thought of this picture and I was like, oh, Lord, she's right. They're eating the bread. And I mean, when I first saw this picture, I thought it was very sad because why the heck would these creatures want to eat, eat the bread? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, but then, you know, we just we had an encounter a couple weeks ago where I went outside at night mm -hmm. and I gave them an offering of, a, of bread and they actually took it. So we know that they definitely like bread for some reason, but I've never intentionally other than that day fed them intentionally. Cause I know you're not supposed to feed these creatures because mm -hmm. the minute you stop feeding them, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So Interesting. Hmm. So where do you think it goes from here? Uh, well, let me ask you that. Let me ask you this yeah. first. Do you think there is a chance, even a small chance that you may have had a Bigfoot around there at one point. What I mean, why do you ask that? Well, you know, I, I you know, I've heard a lot of these cases, uh, and I have had a lot of people who have said to me that they thought they had a Bigfoot, and vice versa, or a dog man, and weren't really sure. And I was just wondering if there was anything that you may have noticed that was a little bit odd compared to other evidence that you picked up that might have seen that was something other than what you had noticed before. Um, I mean, before we started having these encounters, you know, you watch the Bigfoot things on TV and you're like, right. 
you know, I, I mean, I never, I honestly never paid attention to any kind of cryptids and stuff. I like watching scary movies, but you know, um, I don't know if I would know the difference, honestly, between mm -hmm. a Bigfoot and a Dogman, other than the pictures and stuff that we've got. Mm -hmm. um, we have noticed a very distinct smell a lot of times. That's almost like a skunky, sweet smell. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes in my mind, I wonder, is that Bigfoot or is that Dogman? And is Bigfoot coming around because the Dogman told me, told him that, hey, go check out these people. They're kind of cool, <laughs> you know. But as far as having seeing them have you ever i i would just say with with a couple of quick shots that i saw i i it was more of a leaner type body real you know hybrid built for speed kind of real mm -hmm. big shoulders but and and just i mean our our thoughts of bigfoot is, is he's his legs are like you know huge massive and this is more of a slender type I don't, I don't know I, I just I mean he's whatever we've got running around is for sure quick so yeah um, well you know I, I the reason I asked you know from you live west of Akron I mean the whole way from Cayuga down into Cambridge and down that way it has had a lot of Bigfoot sightings over the yeah years. the valley sure absolutely yeah, yeah. and uh I was just wondering if maybe at some point you might have seen something there thought man well maybe it was a bigfoot other than a dog man and look we're i, I definitely believe we have upright i mean canines around mm -hmm. there cryptic canines but uh i was just you know i was just curious if there was something else that maybe uh, give me an indication that maybe it was something other than that but yeah okay and i think because in where we live it's you know the houses are far apart but they're not that far apart so I don't think Bigfoot likes this kind of, you know, being around people. I think it would be mostly in the marshlands and maybe around the Silver Creek area that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, but dogmen definitely like to be around people again, like I said, because I think we're, you know, our pets are easy pickings for them and they mm -hmm. can get a quick lunch. Well, the Bigfoot team that we've talked to, too, they've, they've kind of said that that they think that some of these dogmen are actually – that Bigfoot is a little bit intimidated by the dog man. So whether or not that's true, I don't know. And well, it's we're pushing kinda, them, <laughs> pushing them out of their territories. I, I had done investigations in areas where both had been. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. uh I, you know, I've been in contact with several investigators who have been in areas where they've actually had, you know, they battled, you know, Right, uh, northern Minnesota is, is a particular area where there this, some of this has happened before, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I I think you're probably right. I, I know here in Pennsylvania, uh, they they do keep apart. Um, it seems that when they travel, and of course you have a lot of mountain ranges and ridges around here, uh, the dogmen or the upright canines seem to stay in the higher ground, and the uh, Bigfoot will travel in the valleys. Uh, now, I don't know if they migrate or what they do. I, I guess maybe at some point they do go to other areas and come back and forth. But, uh, you know, we I'm talking about areas around the Appalachian Trail and such that it runs through, you know, the Blue Ridge and the South Mountain and in that area around here. Uh, it does seem that the sightings we get uh, that the, the Bigfoot kind of stand lower ground as compared to the, uh, the, the canines. And the one thing that I notice is, you know, trying to get as much information, basically how to research. And, you know, the team is helping us out tremendously. They've taught us all kinds of stuff about hydrocal and things like that. Mm -hmm. we, we also find ourselves watching stuff, um, you know, not for the scare of it, but also just kind of learn, you know, things that I watch on TV. And um, one of the things I think is that, um, oh man, I just lost my train of thought. Um, that, that, that definitely the dogmen like to be around humans or they tend to congregate a little bit about humans. Mm -hmm. And oh, and then some of the things that I see where they talk about the speed and they talk about this, I really believe that there's, Bigfoot sightings out there that are being 
labeled as Bigfoot sightings when they're actually dogmen. Oh, I believe that's true. I think vice versa as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I've thought that for a long time. Uh, Nancy Malcolm asked, uh, what do you think they eat uh, other than, you know, the pets and the small critters around her? Have you ever heard of any cattle or sheep or anything bigger being taken down? No. We, we don't have a lot of um, farm animals around here. I mean, we've had pigs. We've had goats. We had the gentleman, you know, our neighbor had cows. Um, we haven't heard of, of, you know, but we don't talk to a lot of the, the farmers yeah. either. You know, yeah. we, don't, we pretty much stay to ourselves here. So there could have been, but we, we're just not aware of it. Interesting. I also have a question. Do you think they enjoy scaring you, that they kind of feed off of it in a way? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, hey, let's, honey, let's go on a date and let's go scare, you know, these two people over here. <laughs> so I think, I, yes, I think they enjoy it. Um, and now we've added a different dynamic now that um, we're not as afraid of it as we used to be. Because, I mean, literally, I wouldn't go outside at night. Mm -hmm. uh, my son was like, don't go outside without a gun. But quite honestly, I don't think that would help me because these things are so fast. They'd be on me before I could even pull it out. You know what I mean? But yes, I definitely, they have a sense of humor. Um, mm -hmm. I know we're running up on time, but you want me to tell you the, That's all right. Go ahead. the Halloween me. story? Yeah. yeah, I want to hear that. So Greg was out of town and I didn't want to be home alone on Halloween. So I decided of all things, I was going to have a dog man watch party, right? <laughs> So I did have, I did have a neighbor, um, that, um, that had seen some things when he was younger. And so I talked to him, he came with his wife, um, and, um, his son and his son brought a couple friends from high school. Um, the, the lady that I said that her kids saw the werewolf, you know, they came. So we, we basically had all kinds of food. We had a bonfire going outside. I had my laptop up with the pictures and everything. The kids loved telling everybody around the campfire their little ghost story about seeing the werewolf at our house and stuff. So it, it kind of had a fun little twang to it. The gentleman that she's talking about actually <laughs> grew up right across the street from where our house is. So it, it's his mother lives there now, but like literally like, so he, he had seen some stuff and yeah, which was kind of freaky, but sorry, I didn't know. No, 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 that's, let him that's know okay. That, that yeah. He literally grew up like directly across the street in a little. So he, he's past. had, he's had encounters mm -hmm. before. Yeah. yeah. Which leads, which leads us to believe that other people other have people had. Know. Yeah. And oh, we have sure. a couple houses in the area that every year they come up vacant and then it's for sale. And I was like, Oh, they met the dog men and they just, <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so, Somebody brought up the idea of, oh, let's go on a dogman walk. And I was like, no, that's not a good idea. Let's just stay around the fire. And then everybody wanted to go on the walk. So, you know, we had the stories. So I, I had a flashlight. And, of course, I, I was carrying and everything. So we kind of took them around the parts of the yard and stuff like that. We went in the neighbor's yard. Um, and it was funny because we came around the antique barn and there were eyes in the in a tree. And everybody did a coll collective, <gasps> you know. And then I was like, okay, guys, you know, it's a raccoon. Just chill out. It's okay. And every, everybody's like, well, let's go back. Let's go back. So we went back. So we were kind of around the campfire and, the, and the, the teenagers, one of the teenage boys had driven and he wanted, he decided it's like midnight. I'm going to go home. Mm -hmm. So then I hear this commotion going on and, and he's like, who took them? What's going on? So I'm, I walk over to the driveway where they're at. And I was like, Hey guys, you know, I got neighbors here. Let's kind of keep it down. What's going on. And the kid tells me that he lost his keys and he can't go home. So I said, okay, you know, what do they look like? Let's kind of look around. He says, well, you know, it's on a red lanyard. And I said, well, that, that'll be pretty easy to find. So, you know, everybody started looking for his keys and we went in the house, we went, we were scouring the yards and everything. And then he decided, well, I'll, it, you know, he asked me if I just leave my car here, you know, can I, um, just come and get it tomorrow. And these guys will give me a ride home. And I, I was like, yeah, well then probably about maybe about five, 10 minutes later, um, I was back at the campfire roasting some s'mores and, and, uh, I heard some commotion towards the back of the property and it was the kids again and they were getting pretty loud. So I walked over and I was like, Hey guys, you know, we talked about this now and there was no alcohol at this party. So <laughs> it wasn't that. And one of the girls said to me, um, he found his keys. 
Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, great. That's cool. And she goes, no, he found his keys. And I went, okay. And then all of them at once pointed up into the branches of this small tree. And they were up in the tree about eight feet high. Wow. And, and when I say they were up in the tree about eight feet high, I don't mean they were just thrown into a tree like somebody was messing with him, right? These, the lanyard was totally wrapped around the branch. Every inch of that lanyard was wrapped around that branch. And we were all kind of looking and going, well, how did that happen? Right? Because just throwing something in there, there was enough brush and stuff that it wouldn't have, there's no way, there's no logical way that it would have, something placed and wrapped those, some, something did it. I have, you know, and so I was like, okay, well, uh, let's go and get the ladder. And, and they're all like looking at me. And I said, so I went, we, we all went together. We got the ladder. We, I put the ladder up against the tree and the tree was only at that time was only about three inches, you know, in diameter. It was a very small tree, but it was very tall. Um, so it's not like somebody could have, you know, climbed up it cause it would have broken it a full size, you know, adult would have broken the tree. Um, so I, I put the, um, the ladder against the, the little tree. And I, I said, okay, who wants to go and get it? And, <laughs> and honestly, I was like, okay, this is my responsibility. I, I brought these kids and, and, you know, I should go up and get it. And the whole time I swear I was waiting for something to grab me or something to push me off that ladder or, mm -hmm. and I gave that kid the keys back and he got out of there so fast. And the next day I asked our name, you know, our, the gentleman who used to live next to us, our neighbor, um, you know, how's he doing? He goes, he told everybody, I don't talk about it. I don't want to hear it. He thinks that it took it out of his pocket. You know, while when we were going by that, he, he said it was in my pocket. I think it took it right out of my pocket. So here we thought we were being cool by going on this dog man and then trick or treat. He played a trick. <laughs> on us. Wow. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. So I have a question for you guys. Why did you want to come forward now? I mean, I think it's important as an experiencer myself that I never talk to anyone about it. And then, you know, I, I think it's important to start talking about it. You know, any experience you've had. So why, why did you guys feel it's important for you to come forward now? I, I think mostly because we're in a different phase in this. Um, you know, you go, we went through phases and the, the first phase was what the heck? You know, and, and then you go through an investigative phase and um, then you go to, I mean, literally when COVID was going on and everything, I was like, you know what, dog man, you just got to take a back seat right here. You know, you go through, I'm going through my life. And sometimes, sometimes, I mean, there were times when they didn't come by, come by or we didn't realize they were here for a couple of years. Yeah. I don't think we picked up on the signals and the stuff they were doing or sometimes we just get so used to things going on that we don't hear it or we don't see it you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's just an everyday thing so i think the main thing was you know i finally when i reached out to lawn and he got back to me like right away um when i started talking to jennifer when I started talking to Rich, Dave, Todd, and oh, by Kane Michaels, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a big, big foot and, you know, investigator. Um, he's a part of the team as well. Um, when I started realizing that we weren't alone and we were not crazy um, was when I said, okay, you know, these things are out there because I have no doubt whatsoever. I, I know what we have here. I don't care what anybody else says. Um and, but, and people need to be um, aware of it, right? right. People, people yeah. basically need to be aware of it. They need to be careful, but, you know, people also need to know that I don't think these creatures are there to hurt us um, unless we do something to them first. That's kind of how and, I feel. Yeah, and I what would you tell somebody who's going through the same exact thing that you are, who thinks they're crazy and they don't want to come forward. What would you tell them or want them to know if they're watching, you know, if they stumbled upon this and they see this and they're like, I'm experiencing this, you know, experiencing the same thing, but I feel like I'm losing my mind. Number one, you're not losing your mind. You know, your mind from what, what our experience has been, your mind tries to talk you out of what you've seen, what you've seen. 
no, it couldn't be that, you know, and, and I think that's the worst part of it is that we are so busy trying to rationalize what we see or what we experience that we don't get to experience it fully. And that's a shame, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but then we've also got the fl fight or flight instinct that tells us that, you know, I've been at the top of the food chain this long. I don't want to be at the bottom. So we back away from any experiences. And then there's the embarrassment. You know, people that want to shame you. I mean, social media is just horrendous with those kinds of things. So you have all those things against you. And then also, who can you trust? You know, so yeah. my experience is, you know, if you're on here, reach out to Lon. Lon can get you. And I would love to talk to you. I would listen to anybody who has anything to say. I believe my husband would, too, um, because we have experienced it for 12 years. We've experienced the fear. We've experienced the panic. We've experienced the holy heck, we've got to move because I can't do this anymore. You know, so reach out. You're not alone. You know, I basically want to say you're not alone. There are people out there who can help you and people who will understand your experiences you just have to find the right ones. Well, that being said, I appreciate what you said. And uh, I want to again thank uh, Carrie and Greg for joining us tonight. I think it's very important that you come forward, and I think others should as well. So uh, if anything else comes up, you know how to contact me. And uh, I'm quite sure that our our listeners appreciate you do that you'd have come forward. And uh you know, as the time goes on and things happen, maybe we'll have you come back and give us an update. Well, we'd love Sounds to do that because we're going to start the investigation part of it. So I, I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Okay. All right. Well, you have a good evening, good weekend, and I, I'll talk to you to you soon. You take okay. care. Okay. Right. Good night. Good mm -hmm. night, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now, if you have a sighting or encounter report that you would like to be considered for the personal report show, or post on Fams of Monsters, just forward my email at lawnstrickerfamsofmonsters.com. Uh, I want to again thank Carrie and Greg for joining me this evening. And thanks to each and all of you for watching and chatting. It's truly appreciated. Your, your support is what makes it possible. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment on, on what you, you've heard tonight. Uh, so next Friday... Psychic and medical intuitive Sue Walker will again be joining us. Now, this time, our discussion is going to center around her encounters and work with Bigfoot. So this should be an interesting show. So make sure you join us. So until next week, stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.